And the next presentation um, is radonquiview.org, working toward an online evergreen radiation oncology clinical education platform, a collaborative effort. Presenting is Jeff Rickman from the University of Nebraska. Thanks for the introduction, Steve. Uh, so grateful for this opportunity. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. It'll let me go. All right, perfect. So uh, there's been so much progress in our field. You know, TG101 uh, just came out in 2010. And then in uh, 2015, we were allowed to use immune checkpoint inhibition off of clinical trials. And then same thing for BRAF and MEK inhibition. That was around 2015. And then, well, what about patterns of relapse after CAR T cells, right? Like what patients should we be consolidating um, for with CAR T? It's just so much information out there and how do we stay on top of it? So when I first started uh, my intern year, this was a lifesaver for me. Toronto Notes is really the inspiration behind this whole project. It's everything in the palm of your hand. Um, and it's cross-linked and it's mobile friendly. At that time, all we really had was uh, wiki books. Um, and I found the information to be really siloed and there's a lot of directories and subdirectories. And I found the search function kind of clunky and uh, just salient information was lost for me. Since then, we've had a lot of great resources, right on questions, obviously the, the MedNet, and then right on tables is great for oral board preparation and key studies. And one thing I love about the sheets function with Google is you're allowed to have multiple sheets under one document. Google Docs, that's not the case. You kind of have to divide them into different sheets. Um, so hopefully we can petition Google and allow them to do tab documents. And then the last two really kind of go without saying, um, and so now here we are in the sea of information and we've got our floaties and we're able to stay on top of everything. But do we have a, a resource that um, really just keeps track of most everything out there? And, and so this has been a dream of mine for, for many years, um, even before residency. So I always joke and say it's a glorified Rolodex of clinical trials. And so we believe it's possible to maintain a, a comprehensive, actively updated collection of clinical trials to place evidence at the fingertips of busy practitioners. And then we aim to present topics in the most objective way possible through a contributing audience to influence patient-centered care. So methods is we standardize a way to succinctly deliver salient points of clinical studies, including commentary from contemporary thought leaders. Shout out to Quadshot News, um, Aero, and uh, Zorsky, all quad shot. There's like hundreds of quad shot links. There's all Aero cases and contours, and then E contour as well. All the cases are linked. Um, and so shout out to them. Thank you so much. And Zorsky's illustrations are great. We, we hyperlink thousands of papers. We crowdsource from 21 journals, uh, compile a bunch of um, pages of documents. And then um, we encourage collaboration by allowing anyone to, con to contribute um, and final approval by administrators. We might require login in the future, but I want to make this as accessible as possible now. Google Analytics for patterns of use and then manual review of commentary to gauge audience participation. So a little vision and demo. This is all on mobile. So we'll see here, Toronto Notes is gonna to move quick. We're gonna to go to table of contents because uh, we have limited time, right? We're gonna scroll down to everyone's favorite subject, which is obviously pediatrics. Uh, and then from there, um, we'll go to, uh, let's say Wilms tumor, right? So everything's hyperlinked. Don't laugh at my med school notes on the right there. Neuroblastoma is conveniently right next to it, but let's cross link over to orthopedics, right? Pictures on the side, so convenient. Just as all mobile, click on the subheader to return to the header, to return to the table of contents. So that's what I wanna build. Um, and so this is what we've done. Uh, from here, we're gonna go to my, my absolute favorite section, which is constraints. This is the most meticulous section to build. Um, master constraints really anchors down all the other sections together with clinical correlates and quantech correlates. Everything's hyperlinked to the paper. But for now, I just wanna focus on the triple dots in the top right. Whenever you're in portrait mode, you can pull up document outline and it's just super easy to navigate. Um, so just use document outline when you're portrait. Everything else I do is landscape mode. Again, master constraints. Really everything here is tied into this table. If you click on something in brackets, it's gonna bring you back to master constraints and then subheaders go back to headers. This will be real quick, but we're gonna go to CNS first. And then from here, let's check out conventional for brain. So from here on the right, we can see Quantec, right? You click on that, it tells you right to the paper. Now let's go back to master constraints. 
here's single fraction right here. This goes all the way up to eight, but we have 15 fraction constraints too. And then here, quantex right there. Let's go back to master constraints. I know this is really quick, sorry guys, limited time. Now we're gonna check out five fractions intact and post-operative for three and five fraction constraints for brain mass. Now we're gonna click on the subheader to return to the master constraints and check out thorax. Trachea is a very interesting topic. It's not limited for 0617. And uh, fractionation teams are all over the place for five fractions to the trachea. So let's learn a little bit more about treatment of central and ultracentral lung. So it pulls up the other document because it's not a tab document like Google Sheets. And then you can read more um, and then click on uh, the subheader to return to the header, to return to the section, to return to the table of contents. So it's all in all, it's really quick and I have a minute and a half to get through the rest. We went up from 30 users to 100 weekly users. Uh, actually, this week has been a record-setting week. We've hit 150, so thank y'all so much for visiting. Um, and then shout out to eContour. I hope we see you know somewhat of growth here. I think we might hit 400 users this this week, so we're definitely small potatoes compared to them. So results: we can capture unique weekly users um, and it's sustainable in the short term. We've had over a thousand unique visitors from 40 different countries. Um, but contributions uh, remain limited. A participating audience is difficult to enlist. Shout out to Anna Laukas. She's uh, responsible for about 50 of these comments from half a day's worth of work in the rest section. Otherwise, people adding new content is really rare. Um, and so, and then most are accidental um, because people are trying to find things or whatever. I'm just glad people are using it. It's, it's easy for me to approve or deny things. So future directions to embed key images and figures for all disease sites. I've already started doing that with Zarsky's illustrations which are incredible and Google Draw is amazing too. To merge all disease sites into a single document, please petition Google to allow tab documents or the notebook layout, that'd be the easiest thing. Building PDFs are very tough and I've already gotten most of the crosslinks in there. Um, so this is just home stretch. most of the work's done. We welcome input from Rockstick to make this available to all residents as part of their educational resources. In every section, speaking of future directions, this is future directions of our field. Every section has great ongoing clinical trials and access to NCTN uh, disease site portfolios. Sorry, I went 10 seconds over. <laughs> Thanks to everybody.